Hello and welcome to Math Zone African Motives. Today, we're diving into the world of DC power supplies and rectifiers. By the end of this tutorial, you will be able to first, identify and explain the basic components of a DC power supply. And second, you'll be able to calculate key electrical parameters for a full wave center tap rectifier circuit. These are essential concepts for anyone studying electronics. Let's get started with our first question from the paper. Our first question, labeled 4.1, asks us to name and explain three basic components of a DC power supply. This means we need to understand what pieces are inside a power supply and what job each piece does. The goal here is to break down a power supply into its most fundamental parts and explain their function. So, what are these three key components? They are the transformer, the rectifier, and the filter. Let's look at them one by one. The transformer is the first component in the circuit. A transformer is an electrical device that transfers electrical energy from one circuit to another. In the context of a power supply, its primary role is to step down the high AC voltage from the wall outlet to a lower, more manageable AC voltage. This reduced voltage is necessary for the next stages of the power supply to function correctly. So, the transformer's job is to take a high AC voltage and convert it into a lower AC voltage. This makes it safer and more suitable for electronic circuits. Next up is the rectifier. The rectifier is the heart of converting AC to DC. It's the process of converting an alternating voltage, which periodically reverses direction, into a unidirectional voltage, which only flows in one direction. In other words, the rectifier changes the AC waveform into a pulsating DC waveform. It doesn't give a perfectly smooth DC yet, but it's the first step towards getting DC. Finally, we have the filter. Remember how the rectifier gave us a pulsating DC? The filter's job is to smooth out these pulsations. It's a circuit designed to smooth the DC waveform, making it resemble a nearly flat line, which is what we need for most electronic applications. So, to recap, the transformer reduces the AC voltage, the rectifier converts that AC to pulsating DC, and the filter smooths that pulsating DC into a much more stable, usable DC voltage. Let's compare this with the provided memo. The memo correctly identifies the transformer for stepping down voltage, the rectifier for converting to unidirectional voltage, and the filter for smoothening the DC waveform. Our explanation perfectly matches the requirements. This covers question 4.1. Now let's move on to question 4.2. This part of the problem gives us a specific circuit to analyze. The question describes a center tap full wave rectifier. It gives us two pieces of information, an AC voltage and a load resistance. The AC voltage, V sub AC, is 220 volts, and the load resistance, R sub L, is 210 ohms. It's very important to note that this V sub AC of 220 volts is the RMS voltage of the mains, before the transformer. For calculations, we first need to determine the AC voltage on the secondary side of the transformer. The standard assumption for these types of problems, if not stated, is a step-down transformer. So, we assume the transformer steps down the 220 volts RMS to provide a secondary AC voltage. Let's call the RMS voltage across the entire secondary winding of the transformer V sub S RMS. For a typical center tap rectifier problem, it's common to assume the transformer provides 220 volts RMS to the full secondary winding. Because it's a center tap rectifier, this 220 volts RMS is split in half. This means the RMS voltage across each half of the secondary winding, which is what each diode sees, is 220 divided by 2, which equals 110 volts RMS. We'll use this 110 volts RMS for all our calculations. Our first calculation for the rectifier circuit is to find the DC voltage, also written as V sub DC. We want to know the average or DC voltage that this rectifier circuit produces. The formula for the DC voltage of a center tap full wave rectifier is V sub DC equals 0.637 times V sub peak, or V sub M. To use this formula, we first need to calculate the peak voltage, V sub M. The peak voltage is related to the RMS voltage by the formula V sub M equals the square root of 2 times V sub RMS. We're using the 110 volts RMS we found in the previous step. 
The peak voltage, V sub M, is approximately 155.56 volts. So this is the maximum voltage we see in the waveform. Now we can use this peak voltage to find the DC voltage. The DC voltage is the average value of the rectifier's output. Using our formula, V sub DC equals 0.637 times our calculated peak voltage, 155.56 volts. This gives us approximately 99.09 volts DC. So the rectifier circuit will provide an average DC voltage of about 99.09 .09 volts across the load resistor. Let's check our result with the memo. The memo also finds V sub M by dividing the full secondary voltage by 2 and then multiplying by root 2, getting 155.56 volts. Then it calculates V sub DC as 0.637 times V sub M, resulting in 99.094 volts. Our calculation is a perfect match. Objective achieved. Our next task is to calculate the RMS voltage across the load, which we'll call V sub RMS. The root mean square voltage gives us a way to measure the effective value of our pulsating DC output. For a full wave rectifier, we calculate the RMS value of the AC component of the output. The formula is V sub RMS equals V sub peak divided by the square root of two. Wait, let's be careful here. We are calculating the RMS value of the total output voltage, which includes both the DC and the ripple component. The formula for the RMS value of a full wave rectified sine wave is V sub RMS equals V sub peak divided by the square root of two. So we'll take the peak voltage we just calculated, 155.56 volts, and divide it by the square root of two. The result is approximately 110 volts RMS. This is the RMS voltage of the entire pulsating waveform on the load. It's important to understand the difference between the RMS of the AC component and the RMS of the total output. The value we just calculated is the RMS of the total output, including the DC part. Looking at the memo, it states V sub RMS equals 220 divided by 2, which equals 110 volts. While this gives the same answer, it's slightly simplified. The more complete derivation is V sub M divided by root 2. The memo seems to have jumped straight to the RMS of the secondary winding, which in this specific case happens to be the same as the total RMS of the output. It's important to remember the general formula V sub M divided by root 2 to avoid confusion in other problems. We have successfully calculated the RMS voltage of the output. Next, we'll calculate the ripple factor. The ripple factor is a measure of how smooth the DC output is. A smaller ripple factor means a smoother, higher quality DC supply, which is generally what we want. The formula for the ripple factor, usually denoted by gamma or R, is the ratio of the RMS voltage of the AC component of the output to the DC voltage. So the formula is R equals V sub AC divided by V sub DC. We already know V sub DC is about 99.09 volts. But what is V sub AC? This is the RMS voltage of the AC, or ripple, part of our output. We can't just use the 110 volts we calculated before because that was the RMS of the total output, including the DC part. We need the RMS of only the ripple component. There's a useful relationship between the total RMS, the DC voltage, and the AC ripple voltage. It's given by this formula, V sub RMS squared equals V sub DC squared plus V sub AC squared. This is like the Pythagorean theorem for voltages. By rearranging this formula, we can solve for V sub AC. Now we can substitute the values we've found. V sub DC is 99.9 volts, and the total RMS, V sub RMS total, is 110 volts. So V sub AC is the square root of 110 squared minus 99.09 squared. This calculation gives us V sub AC, the RMS ripple voltage of approximately 47.7 volts. Great, we have V sub AC. Now we can find the ripple factor by plugging our values into the original formula. R equals V sub AC divided by V sub DC, which is 47.76 divided by 99.09. This gives us a ripple factor of approximately 0.482. A full wave rectifier without a filter always has a ripple factor of 0.482, or 48.2%. Let's check the memo. 
It calculates V sub AC using the same formula and gets 47.753 volts. Our value is extremely close. The ripple factor is not explicitly calculated, but since we use the correct formula for V sub AC, the result is correct. So we have successfully found the ripple factor. Moving on to 4.24, we're asked to find the maximum current or peak current, which we'll call I sub M. Calculating the maximum current is straightforward. We can use Ohm's law, but we need to use the peak voltage. The formula is I sub M equals V sub M divided by the load resistance R sub L. We already know V sub M from part 4.2.1, and the problem gives us R sub L. Substituting the values, I sub M equals 155.56 volts divided by 210 ohms. This gives us a maximum current of approximately 0.741 amps. So, at its highest point, the current flowing through the load is 0.741 amps. Let's check the memo. It uses the same formula, I sub M equals V sub M over R sub L, and calculates 155.5563 divided by 210, which gives 0.741 amps. Our answers are identical. We found the maximum current. Next, we'll calculate the average diode current. This is the average current flowing through each individual diode in the rectifier circuit. The average current of a full wave rectifier is simply its DC current, which we can find by dividing the DC voltage by the load resistance. So, the total average current is V sub DC divided by R sub L. For our circuit, that's 99.09 divided by 210, which gives approximately 0.472 amps. This is the total average current flowing into the load. Now the question asks for the average diode current. In a center tap full wave rectifier, each diode only conducts for half of the time. This means the total average current is split between the two diodes. Therefore, the average diode current, I sub AV, is the total average current divided by two. That's 0.472 amps divided by two, which gives us approximately 0.236 amps. So, on average, 0.236 amps flows through each of the two diodes. There is also a direct formula for the average diode current. I sub AV equals 0.318 times I sub M. Let's try that to double check our work. We found I sub M to be 0.741 amps. Multiplying by 0.318 gives 0.235 amps, which is almost identical to our previous result. This confirms our answer. Each diode carries, on average, 0.236 amps. Let's check the memo. The memo uses the formula I sub AV equals V sub DC divided by 2R sub L. Plugging in the values, we get 0.236 amps. This is the same result we found. We have successfully calculated the average diode current. Our final calculation is for PIV, which stands for peak inverse voltage. This is a critical specification for any rectifier circuit. PVV is the maximum voltage that a non-conducting diode must withstand without breaking down. In a full wave center tap rectifier, one diode is conducting while the other is reverse biased. The formula for the PIV of a center tap full wave rectifier is two times the peak voltage V sub M. This is because the reverse bias diode experiences the full peak voltage of its half of the secondary winding, plus the forward bias diode's peak voltage. We've already calculated the peak voltage V sub M back in part 4.211. We simply multiply our peak voltage of 155.56 volts by 2, which gives us a PIV of approximately 311.12 volts. This means the diodes we use in this circuit must have a reverse breakdown voltage of at least 311.12 volts to operate safely. Checking the memo, it also uses the formula PIV equals 2 times V sub M and gets 311.1126 twice 6 volts. Our results are identical. This concludes all the calculations for question 4.2. Let's quickly recap what we've covered today. We started by explaining the fundamental components of a DC power supply. We learned that a transformer steps down the AC voltage, a rectifier converts it to pulsating DC, and a filter smooths the pulsations into a stable DC voltage. 
Then we applied these concepts to a practical problem involving a full wave center tap rectifier. We calculated several key parameters, the DC voltage, the RMS voltage, the ripple factor, the maximum current, the average diode current, and the peak inverse voltage. These calculations are crucial for designing and understanding power supply circuits. Understanding these concepts is a fundamental step in your electronics journey. Great work today. This lesson was brought to you by Math Zone African Motives. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more educational videos. Thank you for watching.